So let's start with the first one, which is uh, atypical heterocyclic antidepressants. All right. So uh, this is the last subcategory of antidepressants which was left. And then by the end of this lecture, we'll be done with antidepressants. I hope you will study well uh, because after Eid, I will be announcing quizzes, which you all obviously have to take. So it, as I said before that the hero antidepressant, the favorite of all, is SSRIs, right? As you go further down, so you see um, uh, all of them start to become the second uh, choice of drug. They're no more the first choice of drug, right? So uh, when we'll talk about atypical heterocyclic antidepressants, so they are not any more efficacious than the TCAs or SSRIs, but their side effect profiles are different. So you see, uh, again, these I'm including in every slide so that you would understand and how much important these slides are for me. Okay, and these will be tested in the exam. All right, so today we'll talk about three drugs. So first of all, start with bupropion. So it's a weak dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor to elevate symptoms of depression. Its half-life is very short. So that is why frequent dosing is needed or you just administer um, extended release formulation, right? Okay. Secondly, bupropion is um, uh, bupropion also assists in decreasing the craving and attenuating the withdrawal symptoms for nicotine and tobacco users. So, all those people who are trying to quit smoking, they can use this drug, which is called bupropion. Okay, so that the craving and withdrawal uh, symptoms would be lessened up. Right? Okay. Now, what are the side effects of this drug? It, it includes uh, dry mouth, sweating, nervousness, tremor, a very low incidence of sexual dysfunction, and an increased risk of seizures at higher dose. So it is metabolized by cytochrome 2B6 pathway and is considered to have a relatively low risk for drug-drug interactions the daily dose of bupropion should be within the manufacturer's recommendation to minimize the risk of seizures. Uh, so it should, uh, its use should be avoided in patients who are already uh, having condition of seizures, right? And all those who have uh, the eating disorders, which is called blue, me, uh, blue, blue wait, wait a minute, bluemia. So if you remember, bluemia was this condition when you eat and then you self-induce vomiting and then you eat again and then you self-induce vomiting. It is that, right? Okay. I Okay. Now we have mirtazapine. So this drug enhances serotonin and norepinephrine uh, neurotransmission by blocking presynaptic alpha-2 receptors. It also blocks serotonin 5-HG2 receptors. It is sedative because of its potent antihistaminic activity. It does not cause the antimuscarinic side effects of TCS or interfere with sexual dysfunction. Uh, increased appetite and weight gain frequently occur. It is sedating, so it helps depressed patients to fall asleep. Now we'll talk about nephadazone and uh, trazodone. So the, these are weak serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Uh, the therapeutic effects are potentially due to blockage of presynaptic, oh, sorry, postsynaptic 5-HT2A receptors. With chronic use, these agents may desensitize 5-HT1A presynaptic autoreceptors and thereby increase serotonin release. Both agents are sedating probably because of their potent H1 blocking activity. Trazodone has been associated with causing priapism. And then um, it, uh, wait a minute. 
Nefazodone uh, has been associated with the risk of hepatotoxicity. Both agents have uh, mild to moderate alpha-1 receptor antagonism contributing to orthostasis and dizziness. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Wait a while while I switch.